Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the pen tool in Photoshop. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a path using the pen tool around this shape. And then I'm going to show you how to convert that path into a selection. Now, if you'd like to practice along at home with this video, you could download this image in the description below the video. I'll have a link to it and you could download it for free and you could use it to practice using the pen tool. Now, the pen tool is over here on, in the tool well on the left hand side and the keyboard shortcut for the pen tool is the P key, pen for pen. And if you just click and hold in on the pen tool, you'll see that there's a number of different tools in that cubby. And two of the pen tools have the P key keyboard shortcut. Make sure you're using the top one, the pen tool. And up at the top, if we look at the tool attributes, you'll see right here there's a drop down and you could choose between path and shape. Make sure we're using path. This tool is probably more appropriately called a path tool because paths are something that are very important in Photoshop and they come in really handy and we'll talk more about paths in a moment. Now once you have path selected over at the far right you want auto add delete checked and just on this drop down where the little gear is click on that and you could uh, control how thick you want the line to be, this line we're going to draw. Now I have mine fairly thick so you could see it at three pixels. And make sure rubber band is not checked because that makes it a little more confusing and your pen tool won't act like mine is going to act as I demonstrate it. Now, what the pen tool does, it isn't something like you would think, like just a freeform drawing tool. Now there is a freeform pen tool in here. If you look, you could see it's there, but we're not doing any free form drawing with this tool. What we're doing is we're laying down a number of points. And whenever you lay down a point, like I'll click here, there's a point. If I lay down another point, it will draw a line. And you could keep drawing lines just by clicking with your mouse button. Now, the power of this though, is you could draw curves as well. And to do that, you would click with the left mouse button and hold in the left mouse button and draw out. And you could see how we're drawing a curve and we could control how much that curves. So we could keep putting down points and drawing curves or lines. And then when we close the configuration that we've created by clicking on the first point again, we close this and now that is called a path. And that is why I think it's probably more appropriately called a path tool. Then what you could do is you could take your path that you just drew and convert it into a selection. And to do that, you just simply right click in the middle of it and you go down to make selection. And now you'll come up with a make selection dialog box. You could just click OK and you could see we have a selection. So the pen tool is probably the best tool to use whenever you want to clip anything out that has a hard edge. It isn't the tool to use for hair. For hair, you'd want to use channels. And I recently did a video demonstrating how to cut out hair using channels. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. I have it linked at the end of the video. And if you're watching this on YouTube, a little flag will pop up over here on the right and you'll be able to watch that video. Now, as far as this pen tool and paths are concerned, what we wanna do is draw a path around this shape. Now to do that, pick a starting point. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna pick right at this little corner right here at the lower left-hand side. And I'm gonna put my first point by clicking with my left mouse button. Now, I want to put another point and I need to make it that line curve to match the curvature of the shape. Now, where should I go? Well, with practice and experience, you kind of know how far along um, a curvature you should go to put the next point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this up into four parts. So point, 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 like four clicks, basically, and we'll 
curve around the whole outside of this shape. The least amount of points you could lay down, the better, because then you'll get the smoothest selection, you know, eventually when you make it a selection. So we're going to put another point like right about here. Now, as soon as I click with my left mouse button, I'm going to hold in the left mouse button and you'll see we have a straight line, but we need this curve. So what we'll do is we'll just draw out from here and you can see how we're curving that line and we're drawing out two handles and that bottom handle, that's kind of where the inflec inflection point of the curve is going to be. And obviously we need it so it's more rounded and not as uh, sharp of an inflection point. And you could see that right there, I've drawn the curve so it perfectly goes along the curvature of the object. So I'll let go of my left mouse button. Now I could put down another curve, but before I do, what I have to keep in mind is this arm, this arm kind of controls the curvature and where the next um, curve that I start to draw, where its inflection point is. So what this arm is going to allow us to do is change direction. You'll see when we get down here in the lower, lower right hand point, the curve's going to be going this way and I'll have a point there. And then all of a sudden we need to change direction. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this to help us change direction in a very smooth, fluid way. But up here, it still has a lot of influence over the next point I put down. And what you'll find is it will be better if we shorten this arm and put it closer to the object. Now, what happens is I just can't go up here and click on it and start trying to drag it because our next click is going to put a point down no matter what. So right here, if I start to just try to grab this by clicking, you can see I put another point down. That's not doing us any good. So I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z on my Mac. It's Control Z on a PC. So to move this, we need to hold in a modifier key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. For the rest of this demonstration, I'm just going to say Alt Option and you'll know what I mean. So I'm going to hold in the Alt Option key. And when I hold in the Alt Option key, it's going to allow me then to just grab this arm and move it. Now you can see it's not affecting the curve that we already drew. It's just allowing me to move this arm. So I'm just going to move it down closer to the original point that I laid down or that second point I laid down. And I'm going to put it right on the object that we're uh, drawing the curve around. This now will help me make this third point I'm going to put down and the curve that it's going to create more accurate. So we'll click now right around here and I'll draw out. And again, I'll just keep moving it around until I kind of get that curve, the right curvature, right inflection point, and that it's fitting along this curvature of the object. Now again, I need to move this arm. So I'm going to hold in the Alt Option key again and drag it. And I accidentally made my image a little smaller. So apologize for that. We'll make it larger again. All right, so I move that in. Now I'll go down to the very end here. I'll click with the left mouse button, hold it in, drag out, and make sure that I'm fitting the curve properly to the object. About like that. Let go. Now I have a total change of direction. I have to go this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold that Alt Option key in again. Click here, drag it this way, and then we'll go up here and I'll click right about there and draw out. Then I'm going to hold the Alt Option key in again and take this leading arm and pull it back and put it along the, the object's edge there and we'll go over here. And I'll click 
and drag. Make sure that it's fitting the curve. And our final click to close the path is I'll hold the Alt Option key in again. Move this over here. and then click right on this path, or this first point I put on to close the path, and again draw out so it fits the curve, and let go. So now we've outlined the object, so we have a path. Now the important thing to remember about paths in Photoshop is they're editable and they're persistent, meaning, if I go over here on the far right hand side and I click on this paths tab, you could see we have a path. That's our work path. Now that is there and we're able to recall this path at any time and edit it if we need to and I'll show you that in a moment. Now what the real power of this though as far as us photographers are concerned is we use the pen tool to create these paths so that we ultimately are creating selections and then we use that selection to clip something out from its background. Now in this case, uh, as I mentioned previously, we could convert this into a selection by just right-clicking inside of our path and going to Make Selection. Now we have some options. We could feather it a bit, and I have one pixel, and Anti-Alias and New Selection are the default uh, uh, operators for uh, this Make Selection dialog box. I'll leave it like that and click OK. And you can see we have our path. And I did OK. I didn't do such a great job up here. Maybe I could have pushed that up a little bit. Now I mentioned these paths are editable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deselect this by hitting Command D on my Mac. It's Control D on your PC. Now the path is persistent. I could go back over here to this Paths tab. And by the way, if you don't have a Paths tab over here, I'm in the Photography Workspace. So if you click over in the top right-hand corner, you can see I'm in the Photography Workspace. If you don't like the Photography Workspace, but you need Paths to show up, it's not in your workspace, just go up to Window and then down to Paths and make sure there's a check mark next to it. So if I want to recall this path I just drew, just click right on it. Now we have our path, but you can see there's no points. To bring back the points and to move anything, if I need to move something, remember I was kind of not very good over here. What you could do is then hold the control or command key and it's control if you have a PC, command if you have a Mac, and I'll just say control command for the rest of the demonstration. And if you hold that key and then click on the path, you'll see all our points are back. Then if you need to move anything, hold that control command key in. And then you could move stuff. See, I can move everything. So I could move things around, try to make it a little more accurate. Just every time you're trying to move anything, you can move a point, you can move the entire line. Whatever you do, make sure you hold that control command key in before you try to drag anything around and move it around. And you'll be able then to maybe more accurately lay this path down around your object. And again, if you need to convert it into a selection, just right click in the middle of it and go to make selection. And I keep screwing up here. On, I ended up putting a mask on it because I'm using an Apple Magic Mouse and sometimes you just make the slight wrong movement with the mouse and you'll do things you don't expect you, you're going to do. So right click and go down to make selection. Then we have the make selection dialog box, just click OK. And you can see we have a pretty good selection of this object. Now again, this uh, image is uh, available to you to practice on. I'll have a link to it in the description below the video. Along with that, I'm going to have an image. I'm going to have this image of strawberries. And this is particularly difficult to do because there's a black background, so it's harder to see the lines. But this is something you may encounter in real life. So 
uh, black background, a little more difficult to see that line we're drawing around. Also, there's a lot of change of direction. So when, especially along the top, when we're going around the little leaves of the strawberries. Now I have a path here. So when you download the file, you could go over to the paths tab and you can see there's a path there. Just click on it to apply it. And you may not be able to see it very well, but it is there. I drew a path around the entire bowl. I'll right click. I'll define or I'll go down to make selection. Again, I'll just click OK and you can see that I already clipped it out for you, but it gives you an idea of how I did it and what I did. Now, the reason why I actually did this is I'm so used to using the pen tool with my Wacom tablet that I haven't done it with a mouse in years. So I wanted to practice doing it with a mouse because I know probably most of you don't have a Wacom tablet. And it's easier for me to describe what I'm doing with a mouse if I'm actually doing it with a mouse instead of trying to imagine what I'm going to do with a mouse when I'm physically doing it with a Wacom tablet. Hope that made sense. So I practiced on this and I thought it would be good for you to have this as well. So you could practice on this image as well. So really, that's all you really need to know about the pen tool is that the pen tool lays down points. The points will create either a line or a curve. And when you join all the points together at the end, you've created a path. The path is persistent. It will stay here in the paths tab of Photoshop and you'll be able to bring it up again and again and again. So, as easy as that, just click on it. We have our path back, hold the control command key in and click on the path and we get our points back. Thank you everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.